What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In this episode, we're going to be going over which local web server you should be using when you're coding with PHP. This is part of our PHP Tutorials for Beginners series, where I'll be taking you step by step how to become a professional PHP developer. When getting started as a PHP developer, it's important that you get familiar with the tools that you're using. One thing I always see is that people start to code with PHP and they download the various tools they need, but then all they do is really focus on coding PHP, and that's fine in general, but if you want to get the best performance out of your system, if you want to get a greater understanding of how the language works or become a real professional developer, it's important that you really master your tools. That could be your operating system, your local server stack, your text editor or IDE, or whatever tools you're using while coding. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you two options you could use for your local web server stack. Both of them work for both Windows and Mac, but I'm going to show you what I prefer for Windows and then my recommendation for Mac. Okay, so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so and hit the notification icon so whenever I release a new video, you'll be notified. Also, a lot of the code snippets that I'll be sharing throughout the series of videos can be found on my website, pixelmub.com forward slash php you can just click on the tutorial that we're looking at and any snippets that i have here you can just copy and paste and use them within your editor and server okay so the first local server stack we're going to be talking about is zamp this one's located on apachefriends.org and this is a great option for your php development environment it gives you the latest version of PHP, and after trial and error for years, I find this to be one of the most stable when working with PHP on Windows. You can read up more about it and see what it offers. Now the next option is MAMP, and this also works on Windows computers, and it works on Mac OS as well. But the one thing I do and have noticed is the fact that this doesn't always support the latest version of PHP on Windows. As you can see here, it currently supports PHP 7.3x. And I've noticed sometimes there might be bugs when working on Windows. But when working on Mac OS, I find MAMP to be very stable and it supports a more recent version of PHP. So if you are working on Mac OS, I recommend using MAMP. And if you're working on Windows, or even Linux, you can use XAMPP. Now, if you want to use XAMPP on Mac OS, you can. If you want to use MAMP on Windows, you can. But for my tutorials, and just in my experience, for Windows, XAMPP is a better option. For Mac OS, MAMP is a better option. All right, so when you're gonna download XAMPP, it'll start downloading the executable, and then I'll walk you through how the installation works. We could click on the executable. You're gonna get a user account control asking if you want to install this, click yes and then it'll start running through the process. You're gonna get a question most often saying if you are running an antivirus program that it might slow down the installation of the software. Just click continue. You might get another prompt saying that because user account controls are active on the system to make sure that the XAMPP program is installed in a specific folder. Click okay. Then you're gonna get the setup XAMPP. Click next. And basically this is the stuff you're gonna be installing. Click next. This tells you where XAMPP is gonna be working from. Click next. The language to use, next. And then you're gonna get this Benami for XAMPP. And this is a way you can get other types of software in an easy to set up configuration. So we'll leave this checked here to learn more about Bitnami for XAMPP. Then click next. You're gonna see that it opens up a browser window. And this just gives you some more information of the type of things you can install with XAMPP and Bitnami. Has support for WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, and a bunch of other modules and things of that nature. Okay, so now it says setup is now ready to begin installing XAMPP on your computer. Click next and let the process run. Once it's done installing, you can open up the control panel and over here, you see we have our various services and modules. We have Apache, MySQL, FileZilla, Mercury, Tomcat. We have the Configure, Netstat, Shell, Explorer, Services. We can start them and stop them. We can configure them and check out the log files. If we go to Explorer, it opens up the location where XAMPP is installed on your system. This is for your various folders. You're going to see what you have installed here. And most often, we're going to be working inside of the HC Docs folder. So one thing I always recommend is on Windows, in the Quick Access section, right-click that when you're inside the HC Docs folder, 
and then click on the pin current folder to quick access. I do this since it's going to be a folder I'm going to be working a lot in. And now to make sure everything's working properly, first thing I'm going to do is click on start. This is starting the web server. Then I'm going to go back to my browser window and then type out local host. Once you do that, you're going to be taken to the dashboard. And here you're going to be given some information about the installation. You can look at the applications, the facts, how to guides. You can see the PHP info. And this is important because it gives you the information about your installation. See the PHP version right here and more information as you scroll down. Go back here. We also have the PHP My Admin. So if I go back to the control panel, I can start my SQL service. Come here, click on PHP My Admin, and this is where you would create databases if you're working with a database. SQL commands, you can import, export SQL that you're transferring or backing up or testing, things of that nature. And now in terms of the installation process with Mac, it's going to be very similar if you're installing MAMP or XAMPP. You download the software, you install it, but in Mac the software is going to be stored in the applications folder, and then the HC Docs folder is going to be inside the software folder itself, whether it's MAMP or XAMPP. And then one of the main differences is instead of localhost, as you see over here, it would be localhost colon 8888. But again, my recommendation is if you're on Windows, use XAMPP. If you're on a Mac, use MAMP. They are both cross-platform compatible, but I find XAMPP to be more stable on Windows, and I find MAMP to be best for Mac OS. Okay, so make sure to spend some time playing around with your local server. Get familiar with it. Any projects and files you'll be creating will be stored within the HC Docs folder. Go here. You can create a file, you can create a folder, things of that nature. Now, these folders here for XAMPP, these you're going to want to leave alone. Leave them here. Just create your files and folders that will go in here as well. So if you can create a PHP project, you can call it or create a directory called PHP. And you can work with it from here. If you want to see how to install MAMP, I do have another video that I'll link to in the card section in the upper right corner and down in the description area. So you can check out that tutorial on how to install MAMP on Windows. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification icon. And again, any code snippets I share or any tutorials I create can be found on my website, pixelmurb.com. And if you're not already part of our community, then subscribe and hit the notification icon. That way you'll be notified when I create a new video. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy coding. Mm -hmm.